with extensive mountain ranges and numerous long rivers, China boasts abundant hydropower potential. According to the Chinese Ministry of Water Resources, the country has over 98,000 dams, surpassing any other nation globally. The majority of these dams are of medium and small scale. In particular, China owns nearly half of the world's 50,000 large dams, more than three times that of the United States. In the list of the 11 largest hydropower dams globally, China possesses six projects, such as the Three Gorges Dam, Kala Dam, and Baihetan Dam. Therefore, it is not surprising that China is the world's largest producer of hydropower issues with China's hydropower dams. Ecuador's China built dam nightmare and excessive dam construction in China. China's dams have frequently raised concerns about their quality. A notable example is the disastrous project in Ecuador known as the Coca Codo Sinclair hydroelectric plant. Ecuador's largest infrastructure project, built with Chinese assistance, has faced issues since its completion. The dam, constructed by China's Sinio Hydro Corporation with a $1.7 billion loan from China's Export-Import Bank, was initially celebrated as a solution to Ecuador's electricity shortages. However, concerns about the dam's structural integrity have emerged with critics alleging a lack of oversight and control by the Ecuadorian government in its collaboration with China. In 2022, it was reported that 7,648 cracks were discovered in the plant's distributors, raising serious concerns about the project's viability. Dams are constructed for flood control, electricity generation, water regulation for irrigation, and waterway transportation. However, dam construction activities have faced criticism. Many oppose hydropower dams for environmental reasons, while others argue that they waste money, affect arable land, and force thousands of people to relocate. Among the 98,000 structures, over 80% are over 40 years old, posing safety risks. They were built in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s with low safety standards. Many of these structures are in serious disrepair. According to the Chinese Ministry of Water Resources, 3,015 reservoirs have ruptured from 1915 to 2011. Among them is the Bangyao Reservoir Dam disaster in 1975 in Hainan Province, China, claiming the lives of around 240,000 people. In 2021, Bloomberg reported on China's intention to dismantle 40,000 hydropower dams. The reason is that the country has built dams recklessly without assessing the environmental impact, resulting in an excess of redundant small dams. They become useless when water is scarce or when there is too much sediment. However, closing a hydropower plant is one thing, but completely removing a dam is another matter. As it is a complex structural project with many inherent dangers, not to mention the high cost of demolition. Recently, Josh Clem, director of the non governmental organization International Rivers, stated that China has reduced dam construction in recent times. This could imply that the peak dam has arrived and the number of dams being constructed may slow down and begin to decrease. According to a report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, in February 2023, the decline in hydropower dam construction is partly due to the exhaustion of most favorable locations, leaving only hazardous areas, making construction more difficult. The Three Gorges Dam is a potential threat. Everyone is curious about the Three Gorges Dam. The Three Gorges Dam is the largest hydraulic project in Chinese history drawing significant attention for its majestic architecture and substantial contributions to energy production. However, this massive dam also poses various problems and impacts. According to statistics, after the construction of the Three Gorges Dam, the surrounding areas experienced numerous catastrophic geological disasters, including earthquakes, landslides, and magma activities. If the Three Gorges Dam were to collapse, the resulting disaster would be devastating. The water level of the Three Gorges Dam was 166.86 meters. 
In September of this year, the water level had risen by about 7 meters. Last year's water level was around 149 meters, so this year, it is more than 15 meters higher. We have previously provided updates on the current status of the dam and predicted its potential collapse. Before discussing the impending disaster of the Three Gorges Dam, we will talk about several dams in China that have collapsed over the years. The most significant catastrophe to mention is the collapse of the Bankiao Reservoir Dam in Hainan Province. Once in a millennium floods, the propaganda and reality. During the Great Leap Forward, the whole country vigorously embarked on large-scale water conservancy projects with a surge in the construction of reservoirs. The Jumadian area in Henan became nationally renowned as a pioneer in this effort. It not only took the lead in building reservoirs, but prior to 1949, Jumadian was part of the Zain region. The rainfall during that period was described not merely as heavy, but as if someone had turned on a giant faucet, continuously pouring water down. The epicenter of the torrential rain was in the hilly area upstream of the Huai River in southern Hat during six hours. The rainfall reached an astonishing 830 millimeters, surpassing the world record of 782 millimeters. In 24 hours, it reached 1060 millimeters, equivalent to flooding the ground with a meter of water in a single day. The Huai River Basin, part of the transition zone between the northern and southern climates of China, faced challenges due to the frequent diversion of the Yellow River over several centuries. Before the 12th century, the Huai River's water system was complete flowing independently into the sea. However, after the 12th century, the Yellow River frequently overflowed, diverting into the Huai River and changing course numerous times over six to seven centuries. In 1950, a significant flood occurred in the Huai River, leading Mao Zedong, the top leader of the Chinese Communist Party, to emphasize the need to repair the Huai River. Soviet experts were then invited to provide recommendations. During the peak of socialist fervor, various regions competed in water projects, some constructing large reservoirs, others medium-sized, and those with limitations building small ones. In total, over 100 new reservoirs were constructed. Water experts at the time pointed out that building reservoirs and storing water in this plain region had two particularly obvious disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that excessive surface water can lead to flooding. The second is that it can easily cause land alkalization. However, at that time, the advice of water experts was overshadowed by the leader's call. The Great Leap Forward resulted in a massive famine, known as the Yixinying Famine, which stirred public anger. Hu Zipu, the then party secretary of Henan, faced resentment, and millions of people died. In order to ensure his safety, it was suggested that he leave Henan, or else he would be killed. Later, Li Yangsun became the new party secretary of Henan. He was even more determined to confront challenges, believing that the previous famines in Henan were related to the current flooding disaster. And to address the flooding, he advocated for the construction of more reservoirs. In the late 1960s, over 100 new reservoirs were added in Zumadian. In the limited historical data available, there was a propaganda-driven claim that these floods were of a once-in-a-century or once-in-a-millennium magnitude. However, these flood standards were more of a propaganda nature and lacked a true scientific basis. The idea was that setting these flood standards would instill confidence in ordinary people and engineers that several large reservoirs could withstand floods occurring once every 500 years. This included the previously mentioned Bankiao Large Reservoir which, according to this standard, could withstand a once-in-a-thousand-years flood without damage. However, nature does not adhere to human standards. The rainfall in the span of five days was equivalent to twice the design standard of a once-in-a-thousand-years flood, as people commonly describe it. By August 5, the water level in the Bankiao Reservoir had rapidly risen to 108 meters, nearing its maximum capacity. On the night of August 7, the Jumadian Revolutionary Committee and the Production Command held an emergency flood control meeting, while many reservoirs were discussed as being at risk. Surprisingly, Bankiao was not mentioned. One reason was that communication between Bankiao and Jumadian had already been cut off. 
Another reason was that Banqiao Reservoir was known as an ironclad dam believed to be sturdy, and authorities did not anticipate a more dangerous situation. The Nature's Wrath Unleashed, Banqiao's Reservoir Nightmare However, small reservoirs had already collapsed on that day. Chaos ensued at the Banqiao Reservoir, with torrential rain making it nearly impossible to see. People watched as the rising reservoir water quickly leveled with the dam. By the early morning of August 8, a terrifying scene suddenly unfolded. People standing on top of the Banqiao Dam suddenly noticed that the flood water plummeted at an astonishing speed, as if the earth had opened a hole and the water directly sank into it. The rapidity of this retreat was shocking, and all the onlookers were left in awe. They heard a tremendous roaring sound, as if the noise did not originate from this space, and it was extremely frightening, accompanied by a strong wind. It swept past people's faces. A phenomenon occurred. Everyone looked and the reservoir was leaking. Damned, damned. People began to cry out helplessly as the Banqiao Reservoir suddenly collapsed releasing 600 million cubic meters of reservoir water in a terrifying torrent. This deluge caused by the dam collapse was vastly different from typical floods. Why? Because it was the potential energy artificially accumulated and it suddenly unleashed this enormous destructive force that was impossible to resist. Silent for 30 years, the Bankyo Dam collapse finally acknowledged by Chinese leadership Dozens of reservoirs collapsed, one after another. Like dominoes falling, the torrents rose as a formidable wall, transforming rural villages and towns into nothingness. The local administrative authorities in Zumadian did not make any corresponding emergency arrangements for the entire area. People were still resting, sleeping, and only Sandu County was notified. Sandu County, located just below the reservoir, knew it couldn't hold back the water. They told Zumadian, those who can leave should leave quickly. However, just across the river, in Suping County's Wenching Commune, there was no warning at all. Survivors who made it through later said, before the floodwaters came down, how could we have known the reservoir was dangerous? Here in the dark of night, people in the village could faintly see someone on the Sandu County side, vaguely shouting something, but with the loud wind and rain, they couldn't make out the words. Suddenly, a dazzling wall of water as high as a mountain rushed over. Hoosh! Everything was gone. Someone mentioned having three girls at home. The wife held one, and he held two. They ran out of the yard just as the massive flood came crashing in, covering the entire yard like pulling up a blanket. Time villagers tied their elderly parents to a large tractor. Since the tractor was too heavy to move, with one twist of the head, both the parents and the tractor were gone. The flood even washed away the burial ground, and coffins floated out. Villagers clung to a coffin lid and survived. They drifted to the edge of the flood, several yards high, floating on the floodhead. Looking ahead, it was like standing on a cliff. On August 9, 1975, at 8 a.m., Zumadian urgently sent a telegram to the State Council and the Central Committee of China, stating that the Bankiao Reservoir collapsed at 12.40 a.m. on the 8th, Suping County town was submerged, and over three million people were surrounded by floodwaters, facing extreme danger. This dam collapse occurred in the deep of the night, and everyone was asleep. After the flood, almost all the bodies were naked, in a white expanse. After the torrential rain, it immediately turned into a scorching sun. The bodies decayed within a few hours under the intense sun, and a terrible mist covered the corpses. The elderly say it's the souls of the dead. Over the next half month, millions of people in Zumadian endured this deep water and intense heat. Up some tied the elderly and children to trees. For days and weeks, the water didn't recede. Without tying them, even a brief nap could lead to drowning. Among the victims, pumpkins floated in the water. People grabbed them to eat, resulting in mass poisoning, dysentery, and encephalitis spreading rapidly. Medical teams arrived, but there were no medicines. Many survivors, sick and desperate, cried while the doctors, without medication, also cried in frustration. The death toll from this flood disaster has always been treated as a state secret by the Chinese Communist Party and was not disclosed publicly until after 2005, nearly 30 years after the flood. Even then, various sources provided significantly different figures. Qian Zhangying, the former Minister of Water Resources, 
wrote a book titled China's Historical Great Floods. In this book, he mentioned that the death toll from this flood was 26,000. Pennon's official figure was 100,000. However, the most accurate data likely comes from grassroots investigations. Qian Zengying visited various grassroots units, villages, and production teams to compile the death toll by counting the number of survivors in each family before and after the flood. This tally added up to over 230,000 people, equivalent to the death toll of the 1976 Tangshan earthquake. Yet, while the Tangshan earthquake is widely known, this disaster, due to power dynamics, left no trace in the collective memory of most Chinese people. In the game of power, all disasters can be turned into a source of national rejuvenation, and all tragedies will conclude as comedies. Comedy is forever the main theme of official reports. In 1981, a Psinghua news agency journalist, in an internal reference within the party, stated that the people in the disaster area still lived in very difficult conditions. This was the truth. However, the official response was to declare, this reporter is talking nonsense. He should not be re-employed. Since then, no one has dared to openly discuss the tragic events of the Bankiao Dam collapse. Without any reflection from the decision-making system, without scientific assurance, and without democratic participation, in 1986, after 10 years of civil protests, the reconstruction of the Banqiao Reservoir commenced. The original earthen dam was replaced with a reinforced concrete dam designed to withstand a 10,000-year flood. On August 1, 2012, then-Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao, during a flood prevention meeting in Henan, mentioned for the first time that the catastrophic flood of 1975 in Henan had caused significant losses. He stated, We must not forget this painful lesson. With this brief remark, you know, it was the first time in over 30 years that the senior leadership of the Chinese Communist Party openly mentioned the Bankiao Dam collapse. On May 28, 2005, the U.S. Discovery Channel aired a special program on the 10 greatest disasters caused by human technological errors in world history. Who topped the list? The Bankiao Dam collapsed in Henan. After the Bankiao Dam collapse, the second largest human made disaster was the Chernobyl nuclear leak. It wasn't until 20 years after the disaster that Gorbachev admitted Chernobyl was the last straw that overwhelmed the Soviet Union. Compared to all disasters, lies are the greatest disaster. Today, the Chinese people possess the Three Gorges Dam, the largest reservoir in human history. It is said to be able to withstand a 10,000 year flood, plus an additional 10%, as suggested by engineering professionals. The claim of 10,000 years is considered conservative. Adding 10% is a marvel of human engineering and technology. Aside from the joy of those in power benefiting, there is also an intangible rising pride among the Chinese people. However, for the displaced immigrants who have lost their land, and the residents in the watershed who look up at this towering Three Gorges Dam, does it resemble a monument or more like a tombstone? No one could foresee on this day in history, the Bonkiao Dam collapse.